Hi artists, welcome back. Today I'm just doing a very simple gouache and neocolor um, crayon painting in my big sketchbook. I really hope you enjoy it. It's a floral painting, um, just something fun and easy. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me grow my channel. Thanks for joining me. Just working in my big sketchbook today. Um, starting off with a very light drawing in here with my um, neo colors. And now I'm going into my, well, this is jelly gouache. It's not even expensive gouache, but I, I kind of like working with the jelly gouache sometimes because the colors are so great and there's so many colors that are already pre-mixed. I don't really have to think about mixing colors. It's just kind of a fun process. It's kind of overloaded with so many things to do before the holidays. So this just feels kind of nice to do a one page in my, in my big journal book today. So I'm starting on a piece of paper it's already been pre-painted with this kind of a medium pink color. This is kind of a chrome green that I'm using here, but I'm using it straight out of the straight out of the palette. Um, I'm not doing anything as far as mixing goes, but I do have a little enamel pan here just in case I feel like mixing any colors. And I also have my um, my neo colors ready, just in case I do feel like doing some more drawing into this little painting. Um, I'll be using some different colors of green just to mix it up. Kind of get into doing my foliage first. This is going to be a floral, just kind of basic kind of a floral floral pattern, which I really like to do botanicals. But when I do them, I do like to mix up my different tones of greens and pinks and reds and have everything mixed together on the page. I like a lot of variety, I like a lot of variety in color and value. So I want some of these colors to be darker than other colors, darker value, as well as different, different hues and colors and coming in to play. What I love about my sketchbooks because I can just kind of experiment in here and just try out different things and see what works color wise and like I just pulled out this very very cool almost blue green which I I really love this against this color pink it's just really popping against this particular pink that I have going on here Great. I don't know if I would have thought to put those two colors together before. So something you learn something new every time you play around in these books too. So just a fun place to play and experiment with color. I'm really enjoying that color mixture. So I might add a little bit to one that I've already started. I don't want to overdo it, but I do want to bring it in another place because I like it so much. It's great. I 
Okay, so now um, you'll see that the jelly gouache really has good coverage over the acrylic paint. You could not do this with regular watercolor. Regular watercolor is far too transparent, so the jelly gouache is much more opaque. It's a little thicker in consistency, even when you thin it down with water. Um, in either medium, the puddle you make with the paint, with your brush and water, is the paint that you're gonna be painting with. You're not trying to make it really thick. You're trying to make a little puddle with the pigment and water, and that's what you're painting with. Now in watercolor, these colors would be very transparent and they would never cover over a thick, opaque, um, painted page in acrylic the way this jelly gouache is painting right over. And jelly gouache is an even expensive paint. Um, it's very inexpensive and I like to use it in my sketchbooks because it's just, these are experimental um, paintings and places to work out ideas and, you know, maybe something that I might want to play with more on a canvas or a larger piece of watercolor paper. Um, these are all for me. So, um, and I really find them very freeing because I'm not, I'm not worried about, oh, is this something I'm going to sell? It's, it's really just all about um, playing and, you know, working out ideas and, you know, just fooling around and trying to, you know, find new compositions and, you know, just seeing like how the different colors interact together. And that's why a lot of times I'll paint these different colored backgrounds just to see how these these colors work together and um, it's a jumping off point so I don't really have a choice but to work with this color or that color that I've already put in the book and it's you know just another challenge to work through so that being said I really do like gouache um, gouache is really really fun to work with because it's kind of between watercolor and acrylic. Both mediums I really like a lot and um, they both have their place, but I think I really love gouache because it's a little bit of both. It's got the opacity of acrylic. Um, it's not quite as opaque as acrylic, but it's, it's pretty thick and you can, you know, you really can layer it up and you can color over a darker color um, with it if you need to. Um, it's just, it's a really versatile medium and I really like traveling with it um, too. So sometimes when I just, it's really hard to travel with a lot of acrylic paint, I'll take gouache and a little bit of watercolor with me. And then sometimes these Neo Color Ones, which I find really versatile as well. The Neo 1s are not water soluble and the Neo 2s are water soluble. They're more like, a, um, they're more, I, I think they're just a little softer and they do um, have watercolor effects. So I like the Neo 1s because they're almost like a pastel, but they're not oily and greasy and they don't smudge and they're just, um, they're very highly pigmented and they blend really well and you can work right into paintings with them. I use them in my acrylic work. I use them in my sketchbooks. I use them in a painting, any kind of painting. I, I really like them very much. I treat all paintings the same way. I work in layers. I like to build up layers. I never think of a painting as done until I've put several layers onto my paintings. So when I'm doing this kind of work, you'll see me go back. If I feel like um, a lot of times um, paint will dry lighter than you put it down, so I will go back after it's fully dry, not when it's still wet, because if you put it on, if you put more paint on when it's still wet, 
um, it usually makes a mess. But if you wait until it's dry and it looks too light, I will put another layer on it. Same thing with backgrounds. A lot of times I like to have the background be a certain color and then use a slightly different color on top and it just adds um, a dimensional quality to your painting. So even though we have this light pink uh, pre-painted background, I will most likely be going over most of that background again with one or more colors. Right now I'm um, adding a little of a dark purple mixed with a umber color that I'm mixing on. Um, I have a, an enamel palette um, aside where you can't see it off camera and I'm mixing that darker purple off to the side there and I'm you know one of those areas will be that color but the rest of the background is also going to get another layer um, in one or two more colors. Um, I just really like that building up the painting um, so that it has more of a dimensional quality. Even if you're going to see some of the original background there, it just, it really does add a lot um, to the painting. Um, if you, if you build up multiple layers of color this way, and I work my acrylic paintings the same way, and I do the same thing in oils. Although I don't tend to paint a lot in oils, I do really love the process of it. I work my way around the painting, making sure that I'm not touching up against wet paint. You can, you can go right up against the edge with colors that don't mix as long as that previous um, color is dry because I'm going right up to green with the purple, which would be a really big, which would cause a really big mess, a big muddy mess. But if my green is dry, it's not a problem. It's not going to cause a problem. I would never do that if the, if the green paint was still wet. I tend to work around the paper. So if I'm working around the page, I, I just go back to the place where I started. And by the time I've worked my way back around, everything where I first started has already dried. And by the time I work back around, you know, the last bits are dry and I can work those areas again. It's just, um, it's nice. And, it, and sometimes what I do, if... If things aren't drying nicely, I'll work on two paintings at once so I can do the same thing. And that also gives my eyes a break. Um, sometimes I need to have a little break from one painting. Um, your, you get, your eyes almost get um, sour from that one painting because you've been looking at it for too long and you get you know, you can't really see what move to make next. So you either need to work on something else or put it aside. Um, if I really get stuck on a painting, I'll just turn it to the wall and leave it alone for about a week and then pull it out and I can finish it in like 10 minutes. These are all little things that you learn as you go along. Please excuse my voice. I had COVID a little over a month ago and it seems to have done damage to my asthma. <laughs> my, I seem to have a, a permanent frog in my throat since then. I'm no longer sick, but I definitely have after effects. But this going back and forth and filling in my layers and coming back in, um, this, is, this is like my favorite part of painting just kind of stepping back and seeing what colors I want to accent and putting all this, these extra layers back in here. These are the, this is what I really enjoy doing. This is the part I like the best. It starts to come to life when you do this. Knowing when to stop is another thing that takes a lot of um, time to learn when you're done um, 
a lot of new artists have have a problem with that um it's also easier if you're working on multiple things all the time right now i'm going back into this and and putting a little mark making in on top of the paint with my neo colors i do this very often this is wet paint these are neo ones they're not water water soluble but i can paint i can draw right into on top of this um paint and it's not going to affect um it's not going to affect the paint i can still get in there and, and draw even if it's wet if they were the water soluble type you would get a different effect but i'm able to get some color in there a little bit of mark making i really do love these i highly recommend both the neo one and the neo two crayons they're just uh lovely to have They're very, very versatile. I call them my grown-up crayons. These are my grown-up crayons. I can remember loving my crayons so much when I was a little kid, but these are even better. They're a little pricey, but they are well worth the money and they last forever. At this point, I had decided that um, I needed to get some darker values on that bottom part. So I just painted over it with a deeper blue into the purple. It, I mean, it still has a purple feel because there's so much blue in the purple that I just made it a blue violet rather than a red violet. And um, it gave it that darker value um, that, that really grounded the bottom of it the way I wanted it to be. Um, I tweaked it a little bit more after the end of this video, but I'll show you a picture of how it came out at the very end. You can see here, I'm going over a lot of the of the watercolor and the um, foliage with another layer. 
So what happens is that um, I tend to work really wet and I like my, my pigments to be very saturated. So what happens is sometimes when things dry, they lighten up too much. So you have to wait and be patient until everything is bone dry. And then you can go in and you can add a whole nother um, layer of color. So I'm going back here and I, I'm darkening some of the values on some of these um, plants and foliage and I'll get that nice deep saturated color I'm looking for. Um, and this is the way you do it. You cannot rush this process. You have to do it while the watercolor is dry. If you try to do it when it's wet, it's gonna just make a big mess. Um, that goes for watercolor and gouache, both of them. You have to really be patient, especially when you're working over, um, uh, as in this case, when I'm working over acrylic paint, which is shiny.